Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nick here, and welcome to my review of Doctor Who, The Reign of Terror. The eighth and final story from Doctor Who Season 1, so after this we'll be on to a new uh, season with Season 2. And, um, yeah, Season 1 retrospective. Good start and good first half of the season with the first four stories, and really great uh, third quarter with Keys and Aztecs. However, the last quarter has gone a little downhill with the sense of rights being an okay, but still got some merits um, in its story. However, we're on to the weakest story of the season, in my opinion, the motherfucking Reign of Terror. Yeah, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of this story, as you could probably tell already. Okay, uh, get the negatives down. Everybody in this story, apart from the four main characters and a couple of others, are absolute bastards. There, uh, there's only about three, four characters, plus uh, the boy in the first two, that I can say are okay. They're pretty good characters. Um, but most of them are bastards. Pure and simple. It's kind of glad to know that some of them get their comeuppance at the end, especially bloody Rhodesbeer, um, who we sadly don't get executed, or even the guillotine dropped at the end of episode 6. We see it at the start of episode 2 with the title, Guests of Malin, Madam Guillotine, to show us. However, we don't get the satisfaction of seeing a second clip of the guillotine dropping to show Rhodesbeer's execution. Uh, the execution itself being off screen, of course, but you definitely see the guillotine being dropped. So, um, that could have been something to improve the story a little bit. Knowing that, well, we know that the guy is being going to be executed. It would have been even better if we saw at least the the just the tiniest amount just beforehand of the execution itself, just the dropping off the sharp metal guillotine on its way down to chop off his head. Um, meanwhile, there's just bad-tempered, rude, pushy, bastardy characters throughout, mostly soldiers and those in power. Um, there's also a second... There's another guy in this... There's a guy in this story, the Jailer, who pops up quite a lot throughout the, series, the story. Um... He, he's like that guy from the Keys of Marinus episode 4, he really wants to get it on with Barbara, unconsensual, by the way, in fact, Keys of Marinus on the back said, uh, depiction, not depictions, um, it says contains a reference to sexual violence. In other words, uh, the guy in that, uh, in episode 4 of that story, um, according to Doctor Who Wiki, was attempting to rape her, or would, was hoping to get her off with her unconsensual. And I think that's the same with the Jailer in this episode. He wants to have his way with her unconsensually by the looks of it. Although his plans for that are quickly gone with the snap of a finger, or rather Barbara's slap of his face. But on the other hand, he then decides to treat her just as badly as Susan's being treated. So, oh uh, well. Um, because that's a bad point, there's quite a few dicks um, across the story as well. Uh, not even dicks, they don't even deserve that, they're, they're bastards, they're... I would even go as far as say as cunts, and I get so annoyed with these shouty, angry, not, not really for any reason, French soldiers just saying gr stuff in a loud, pompous, grumpy, angry voice for no reason. They say they're collecting up traitors, but they are causing more harm than they realise. I know that's a very well dis description of soldiers of 
uh, French soldiers during the Reign of Terror itself. But I think it was the paid a bit too much here. I also absolutely hate the scenes in episode 2 where the Doctor is forced to be digging on the road by this dick of a um, uh, supervisor, I guess. I mentioned this in a Hooniversals video, well, I say, uh, a clone of me says that this is one of the worst mo it's on one of his worst moments lists. And uh, yeah, it is still a terrible moment on reflection. Although, personally, I would probably also add quite a bit more from the story instead of or alongside said scene. Yeah, that was one of the many things I hated in that, in this story. Yeah, it's mainly to do with the French soldiers and all their superiors in the story or that jailer. There are, however, some characters who are good. The character based on the Scarlet Pimpernel and the character who turns out to be the spy, plus the character based on the Scarlet Pimpernel's sister, they're good characters. Um, although... No, they're good characters. Um, yeah, that's basically about it for the characters. And there's one more thing about this story that lets it down so much um, on a very level because we've now also this story has two missing episodes episodes 4 and 5 are missing from the archives and so in 2012 they animated them for, a, for the 2013 DVD release although this was supposed to come out in 2012 same with the Legacy Collection however they were pushed back to 2013 and I do not know why the releases were pushed back, in, but in this case, uh, it was I think it was October, November 2012 they were going to be coming out, and then they were pushed back to January 2013. I don't know why they were pushed back, but I mean, they, we got calls of acts or special edition in October 2012 instead, so maybe it was that. But certainly it was not so that they could finish on the animation of these two missing episodes. They could not... It was a, uh, I also mentioned this in a Universal's video, or a clone does. Um, the delay was not to finish or, well, they did finish, but extra time to finish or complete the solid, uh, not solid, polish the animated episodes. Because the animated episodes suck. And not the stories themselves, they're, they're on the same levels as the other four episodes. Uh, I'm talking about the animation and the sound restoration. Mark Ayers has probably not restored a Doctor Who story uh, story's sound as badly as this. This is the worst restore restoration of missing episode audio. And yeah, missing episode audios would probably not have as good audio as the surviving episode ones, as it would be an off-air one. But I think it, some of them in the radio collection are better, probably, certainly from some of the tennis apps, and other animated episodes, they have better restored audio. Um, so, yeah. And the animation, oh my god. Pup and Theta Sigma have done an absolutely terrible job, at least with characters. Backgrounds aren't too bad, and neither are objects, but characters? Especially on faces, the faces look absolutely awful. I mean, some t they're able to capture most of the features of the characters, but uh, it's not good. And, and these animations is terrible at capturing emotions. Normal animations, they can capture emotion very well. And other Doctor Who audios are able to, and uh, audios, animated episodes are able to do this very well. But this one, it looks really weak. I think this is a more 3D animated ones than the other versions, which are kind of a bit more of a 2D slash 3D ones, but this one's a very 3D one. Uh, I think Pup go on to do the Ice Warriors, or Fate of Sigma do, and I think they do a much better job. Tenth, I think actually maybe they did the Tenth Planet. Uh, that, wasn't, that was a bit better, but not quite as good. And the Moon Base, that one, I think that's when the two companies hit it out of the park but with this one it looks absolutely awful and the, uh, also I think Big Finish got involved with this maybe for helping with the sound or restoration again sucks the 
worst thing about the animation is the uh, restorations and also there's lots of kind of cu jump cuts between different uh, character faces every couple seconds in particularly in episode 4 for, in a scene or two um, also again the emotions they don't really change that much and really I think what they've got down best is mouth movements and maybe turnings of the head and occasional other facial expressions when characters are talking to each other but we don't really get to see much when like say when there's an argument in episode 5 between Barbara and Sue, uh, not Susan, Ian but the faces are exactly normal there's no anger in either of them or upsetness it's just plain and bland I get more emotion in ones like Power of the Daleks in the invasion in the moon base in Charda, even the bloody tenth planet one, which is probably the second weakest uh, animated uh, episode ones, I get more emotions. Ice Warriors, I get more emotion in them. If Underwater Menace and Web of Fears missing episodes got animated, they'd probably show it. Um, probably, depending on the company. Um, and Infinite Quest, Krim the Schalke, Dreamland, more and more emo. They show in uh, uh, their animated stories that show emotion really well, but this story can't. These episodes can't, and it suffers on a result. And so does the story. The official BBC story uh, animated episodes for this story, oh, they suck so badly. And it's the worst thing is it's the first one of the animated stories, as animated episodes in a release order. Um, of original story, uh, not released as originally made, but if you're going in from starting with an Earth Child, going on to the War Games, for example, it's the first one of these stories with animated episodes. And then, of course, you get to Tenth Planet, you get to Moonbase, you get to Ice Warriors, you get to Invasion, and the next one you get to Sharda. Um, did I miss any? I think maybe one or two. No, I don't think so. And then you get the animated story. Uh, oh, power. Power. We've also got power after Tenth Planet. Oh, lots of people outside. Um, and, that, and then there's also the fact, whilst there are some character depicted, uh, uh, when the characters do look like some of the uh, characters or actors from the live action ones, there are other bits where they don't look quite as well done. I think Ian is the weakest one done, but the Doctor is the strongest one uh, done. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I've got fed up with this story. I just can't take it anymore. Um, so, in conclusion, the Reign of Terror, it's... Uh, it gets a bit better later on, but the animated episodes is the weakest... It's the weakest animated... Uh, uh, four and five... Uh, of this episodes four and five of this story are the weakest animated episodes with the weakest uh, audio restoration uh, for them as well and certainly some weaker audio restoration uh, not just for animated episodes but for maybe even if they if these are the same ones for the radio soundtracks then god and if if they sound even better then mark our ayers what have you done I wasn't exactly the biggest fan of his music in Ghost Lights when I first listened to that. Uh, but, to grief. Uh, in conclusion, The Reign of Terror is a weak story. It's got a not so great plot. It's not got very interesting characters apart from the ones that help the main characters. And the rest of them are absolutely unlikable. God, they're the first type of characters I call those characters. We're going to see a lot more of them as we come along, especially in the 70s. And, yeah, and, as I mentioned, uh, the animated episodes and the sound with them are the weakest that's ever been made or restored to animation. I know they tried their best, but I can't help it. They look, It looks and sounds awful. And it's just, there's so much better animated stories uh, or animated episodes out there. We, we'll get to them later. Um, and the sound is much better for them. Shard is an exception because that's mostly renew, 
uh, newly recorded stuff, but for the rest of them, uh, it mostly sounds a lot better. And all of them, the animation is a lot better. Other exceptions to this, uh, to the sound rule, is also the uh, completely new animated stories like Infinite Quest, for example. Because, again, that's completely new audio, but for the missing episodes with uh, animation, and even with some of the restoration ones, like the Galaxy 4, Underwater Menace, and Web of Fear ones, uh, sound a lot better, and maybe even some of the fan ones, possibly. The Marco Polo sound didn't sound terrible, but... No, sorry. The Marco Polo ones sounded okay for what it was, and I think they were actually, their sound was much better than a restored version of this, so I'd hate to hear what the uh, actual unrestored sound was, or what the uh, radio collection one was, if it's worse than this. If this one is an improvement, then my god. However, if they made it worse, then that discredits the animated episodes even further. So, either way, it sucks. And unless we're going to get, apart from the actual missing episodes themselves, the live action ones, we're not going to have a definitive uh, fine uh, episodes four and five of this with good sound, at least good sound, because this sucks. And if it's better than the radio collection, then that's even worse. And if it's not as good, then that discredits the official release, uh, official visual release, that is. Uh, if knowing that the radio collection or the uh, reconstructions do it better. Final uh, score for this presumably quite a lengthy review uh, is 5 out of 10. I gave it a 5 because I was my, nice because it's not completely awful, there's some good stuff. Particularly around the middle and towards the end, minus the fact the animated episodes are absolutely awful to look at and to listen to. God, gr good grief. Um, okay, it wasn't quite... Uh, probably didn't help that there was uh, other members of the family watching something loud on the telly. But episode 6 audio was able to block that out a bit better. So, yeah, episodes four and five audio. I'm also testing it in when it was when it was quieter. They st it still sounded awful. So there were some bits that were okay, but mostly awful. And the that's pretty much the story in a nutshell. Mostly awful, but there were some okay moments. There was some pretty good stuff occasionally spread in. Um, and good God, the stuff with the position. And how some stuff keep how some of the characters keep being recaptured. It's like in a circle or a loop the loop in a way. It's getting a bit frustrating in places. <sighs> the story might have, however, been a six out of ten if it wasn't for the uh, animated episodes. If if it was the actual live action episodes, if it was all the rest reconstruction, the story may have been a six. Maybe maybe not. I'm not sure. Or if the animation had been absolutely worse than it was because it was awful anyway but if it was even worse uh, or if the risk the normal version sound is even worse it could even have been a four so I think a five is fine I think leaving it at five out of ten it's fine I think there's worse stories written and executed but this one I just gets me so pissed off and the and that's not even taken to the count of the dreadfully animated and dreadfully sound restoration animated episodes. Uh, the story itself just just makes me annoyed a lot, and that's just the story itself. Uh, the animated, uh, the poorly animated episodes and the poorly sound reconstruction doesn't help. In fact, it makes it worse. So yeah, that's the reign of motherfucking terror. I hate. Well, I don't hate the story, but I don't really. I don't like it. Not not really. This is this is the first story in Doctor Who history going in order of release that I don't like. Not not really. There's going to be more. There will be a lot more. Season two, however, will not be the any of the, will not feature any of the ones that I pretty much actually there will be one or two. 
uh, weak ones in there. There was one story in season two that I that was my least favorite for a long time, but I like it a bit more now. I might even take over this motherfucking story and. Surprise, surprise, it's by the same mother freaking writer. However, one of my other, one of my long-time favourite stories from the Hartnell era was also written by this guy. And also he co-writes my favourite Hartnell story. So, uh, yeah, and he's a pretty good writer on Thunderbirds, the original series. Dennis Spooner is a very mixed bag for me when it comes to Doctor Who. Because uh, he's got this and he's got the Romans. Uh, I don't like this. I hated the Romans. I like it a bit more now, but I'm not really keen on that. But I really like, I really loved the Time Medley. I not loved it as much as I do now. I don't love it as much as I did, but I do like it uh, quite a bit. And he co-wrote Dalek's Master Plan, which I adore. Well, maybe not quite adore, but I love it. That being said, he did co- And that was episode 6 and 8 to 12. And in fairness to him, he might have written the better episodes. Of that story. Sorry, Terry Nation, but it, I think Dennis Spooner wrote the better episodes of Master Plan. So when it comes to Dennis Spooner, my in Doctor Who at least, because uh, he's great with Thunderbirds. But when it comes to Doctor Who, it's a very mixed bag. Um. So yeah, we'll be seeing him again with the Romans, which is the next four-part story of the series. But we'll still have to go for a three, a six, and two-part so before we get there. Not terrible. So. As that's the end of season one, I will be doing a mini ranking. So that's next, and then after that, the next Doctor Who review will be Planet of Giants, the first story from season one. And after that story, after the Reign of Terror, I'm going to need a really great story, and thankfully Planet of Giants, for me, is brilliant. I know a lot of people love the next story, Dark Condition of Earth, don't worry, that's also going to get a positive review. Um, and I think after two after that, once we get past that, we're going to be in really good mood. Maybe not so much with Crusade and Space Museum, but the others, definitely. So, yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Next will be the ranking. Goodbye. <laughs>
and also he co-writes one of my 